I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is your first look at the Night Force Attacker F1 7 to 35 power rifle scope. Uh, this last November, we got a chance to go out to Core Shooting Solutions in Baker, Florida to check out some of Night Force's new products. Uh, they had quite a few things out there, but the star of the show is the new Attacker F1. Now, the one I have sitting in front of me is the 5 to 25 power version. We don't have the 7 to 35 in hand yet. Uh, but while we were down there at Core, uh, Night Force had a bunch of different shooting stages set up, and we had a chance to use the new 7 to 35 power in a PRS type setting. Uh, the same kind of stages, the same kind of target engagements that we would do in a regular PRS match. And I can tell you, I was really, really happy uh, with the way the scope performed. Now let's talk about some of the features on it. Uh, basically, if you have used an Attacker F1, then the 7 to 35 power will feel exactly the same. Uh, pretty much, it has all the features that we've grown to love with the 5 to 25 power Attacker F1, uh, just turned up a little bit on the magnification. Uh, we still get a 56 millimeter objective. Uh, we still get the same kind of elevation stops and the same kind of elevation turret feel. Uh, same kind of capped windage turret, uh, but again, it will still come with the trim ring. So if you want to have an exposed windage turret, you just pull this guy off, you put your trim ring on, and you're good to go. I prefer running the caps in place uh, because it prevents any unnecessary movement if you don't want to turn that knob. Uh, coming back, you'll have the same kind of eyepiece, the same kind of magnification ring, and it will come with the little cat tail uh, that we have on the 5 to 25 power. And we'll still have the locking diopter adjustment, which is a really nice feature. Now on the parallax side of things, the new 7 to 35 power uh, will have parallax from 10 meters all the way up to infinity. A lot of guys may wonder, okay, well, why do we really need a 10 meter adjustment on parallax on a scope that goes all the way up to 35 power? Uh, well, this is a great feature for military or law enforcement guys that may be setting up on the other side of a street from a target. So being able to dial your parallax out uh, when you are at close range is really a nice feature. Also, for guys that may be running one optic and swap that between a center fire and a rim fire trainer, it's nice to be able to go down to that uh, low distance uh, for certain different shooting problems. So should you decide to do that, you can. Uh, the eye relief we found on the scope was great. Uh, Knife Force quotes it at about a three inch eye relief. And we saw that rotating various different shooters in behind the glass, uh, we didn't have to do a lot of monkeying around. I was able to drop in just fine behind it. Uh, get my eye relief and go. Uh, three inches is sufficient that if you have a higher recoiling platform like a 338 or a 50 BMG, you don't really have to worry about the rifle scope scooping your eyeball out, which is always a plus. Um, Overall, again, the, the rifle scope feels just like the 5 to 25. And that starts to bring out really one of the big questions that people have is why do you need a 35 power rifle scope in PRS type competition? Uh, and really the best thing I can say is it's better to have that option and not need it than need it and not have it. A lot of stages out there, or a lot of matches out there have started doing some paper stages, uh, stages where you actually have to either shoot a very small target or you have to identify targets. And being able to dial up to that higher magnification uh, is just a benefit. Additionally, in law enforcement or military matches, they may have target identification stages or mill ranging stages where you actually have to use your reticle in your rifle scope uh, to do range estimation. And again, a little bit extra power helps there. And if you don't want to run it at 35, if you want to address a stage and run a stage at 15 power or 20 power, then you can always dial the scope down. Uh, it's not really possible to take a 25 power rifle scope and dial it above 25 power. So again, it's all about options. Now, options are great, but how does the rifle scope look when you get it cranked up that far? I've shot some high magnification variables before uh, that were supposed to be top end flagship scopes that once you get cranked up to that 30 power range, the sight picture tends to get a little milky. Uh, we did not see that with the Attacker 7 to 35 power. Uh, cranked all the way up to 35. Uh, now granted, it was a nice bright sunny day, uh, the sight picture was still clear, didn't have any problems looking through it, and it was nothing that I saw that would, 
would made me go, oh, I want to turn this down to get a little bit better sight picture. Uh, you always sacrifice a little bit going to that top end just because of the optical system, uh, but it was not so much that I looked at it and uh, didn't like what I saw. Now, who is this rifle scope really going to be targeted at? Uh, well, if you have already bought a 5 to 25 power attacker F1 or a beast, uh, you're probably not going to want to trade that rifle scope in and get the 7 to 35 unless you just absolutely have to have the latest and greatest. And if you're one of those guys that has to have the latest and greatest, uh, you definitely will want this scope. Uh, but if you have a relatively new scope that goes up to 25 power, then you're probably not going to dump it uh, to get the 35 power hotness. But if you're looking at a beast or an attacker F1, uh, then I would definitely say you want to consider this guy that goes up to 7 to 35 power uh, because, again, you'll just have extra options. Uh, I love that Night Force continues to push that top edge. Uh, they keep trying to, to keep their place at the top of the pack, and the new rifle scope definitely does that. Now, unfortunately, the way the ranges were laid out there, we didn't get a chance to get behind the scopes on paper and actually run tracking tests, uh, but when the spotter called out a firing solution and I dialed it on the rifle, I was able to get on target with no problem whatsoever. Impact. Shift left, middle vehicle, data 2.3, two targets to center of the vehicle, rear seat, and off the right edge, rear of the vehicle. Still left, right wing, point two left, point one, point two left. All right. Which target you want me to take first? Whatever you want. All right, I'm going to take uh, rear door. Rear door. Impact. Shift left through the middle of the vehicle. Uh, so I believe the tracking is going to be good to go. Uh, we generally don't have a problem with tracking in Night Force scopes. Uh, so that's something we'll have to test out when we actually get one in here. And we can take it out and uh, run a tall target test on it. Now these scopes should be arriving at retailers in January and the price that we're hearing for the Mil R and the MOAR version is going to be $3,600. Uh, there will also be a Horus Tremor 3 option in the initial release and that will be $4,000. Uh, and there are other reticles that are in the pipe but we don't have a solid release date on it. You should see a Horus H59 coming down at some point. Uh, but we don't have a solid timeline on that yet. Now, obviously, that price is in the top side of competition rifle scopes. Uh, but again, you have to remember that this is pretty much a flagship scope. Uh, so that price is kind of in line with what the market is supporting right now. Uh, and I don't think with the features and the quality that you have with the Night Force that it's totally out of line. Uh, it's definitely out of some budgets, uh, but you will definitely start seeing them turning up at the PRS matches as soon as they are available. Um, the overall feel of the scope, I love the quality of it. It worked. Um, we didn't have any problems at all with the few that we had out there and they were not used gently. Again, we weren't shooting from static positions. We were shooting from rocks, shooting from barricades, uh, running through shoot houses, uh, shooting from the new tower out there at core. Uh, so they really got a workout and they just worked great. Uh, Accuracy International supplied the bolt action rifles that we were using out there and Accuracy International products always impress me when I get a chance to use them. Uh, the rifles work great. Uh, Daniel Defense also brought out some rifles for us to use. I got to use their new 308 and their uh, Mark 12 platform uh, and both of those worked great and I was happy to uh, get on those and hopefully uh, we'll get some chance to do some work with those going forward. Uh, lastly, I want to thank Core Shooting Solutions. Uh, Brian Morgan and Ryan Castle and Terry Cross were all out there to help us out and make sure we got the most out of our experience out there, and they did an excellent job. Uh, they are just an absolute class act. If you get a chance to go down to Core to shoot a match or take a class, uh, I absolutely encourage you to do so. And lastly, I want to send a shout out to uh, Brian Morgan's wife. Uh, there were a group of us that are all Marines that were out there for the Marine Corps birthday at this, and uh, Brian's wife went out and managed to rustle up a cake for us so we could actually celebrate the Marine Corps birthday in style. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, again, it's just a really comfortable atmosphere, uh, a really friendly atmosphere, and it's a great place to be. 
I want to again thank Night Force for inviting us out to check out their new products. And if you guys have any questions about the ATAC R7 to 35 power rifle scope, please leave them in the comment section below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you like the video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, get out and shoot!